Happy Halloween 2024, everybody. I hope you're having an excellent day trick-or-treating with your family or just hanging out with friends tonight. Hopefully you're not too hungover tomorrow since tomorrow is a Friday. But for now, let's not worry about that. Let's talk about Halloween stuff. I wanna do this thing where every Halloween for the coming years, I wanna review a horror film that I feel like I just wanna watch every time Halloween rolls around, uh, whether it be something like Halloween, or Trick or Treat, which is a definitive. I'm definitely gonna be watching that movie today. I wanna save that video for later down the road when I have like a bigger audience, but today I just wanted to talk about maybe an obscure movie that you guys might have not have ever heard of or just something new for you guys to watch. And that movie is gonna be Monster Squad. Oh my God, I love this movie so much. It's, it's great. Monster Squad is about a group of kids who are in this club, who meet up in this tree house. No girls are allowed. And while they're in this tree house, they talk about their favorite monster movies, monster characters, horror movies, etc. And one night they start to hear stories circulating around town that the monsters from their favorite movies might actually be real and running around town causing mayhem. This includes Dracula, Wolfman, Frankenstein's monster, the creature from the Black Lagoon, and the mummy. That's right, these are all universal monsters, and they're all kind of teaming up in this movie, and these kids have to find a way to stop them. So I actually have a bit of a history with this movie. So when I was growing up, I, I believe it was in middle school, we had a video rental store in my hometown called Network Videos. Uh, it's no longer there, but it was a video rental store that I went to a lot as a kid, and they only had kind of like the mainstream kind of stuff, nothing really too obscure. However, Blockbuster was about 30 minutes away from where I lived. So sometimes if we were, you know, just visiting outside of town, we'd sometimes go to Blockbuster, even though we had a video rental store in my town. And every time when I was in Blockbuster, there was always something that was there that I recognized wasn't at my video rental store. There was a lot more obscure stuff. Blockbuster was actually really good at that kind of inventory. Um, I remembered finding the Super Mario Brothers movie. That was the first time I had ever found out about the film was like, holding it in my hand at Blockbuster. I didn't know anything about it. I just found it, I took it home. Uh, but one of the greatest treasures that I found at that blockbuster was the Monster Squad. I took it home, I was curious. It kind of sounded like a play off of Ghostbusters. I ended up watching it and I fell in love with this movie. It pisses me off that this movie is not as well regarded as it should be. This movie is known as a cult movie, meaning that there are only a certain amount of people who really like this movie or know of it. It doesn't have a wide audience of fans, unfortunately. I think it's only really peaked in volume over the past few years due to the internet. I believe it started kind of like increasing in numbers in 2006, I believe. There's actually an interesting documentary out there called Wolfman's Got Nards. Take him in the nards! Take him in the nards! He doesn't have nards! Go in, go in! And the idea of the documentary is that it goes into the fandom of this film and why exactly it didn't necessarily do too well at the box office when it came out. There's a number of reasons. Uh, number one is that two weeks prior to this film's release, uh, The Lost Boys came out. Yeah, The Lost Boys, that movie, that, that excellent vampire film. That movie came out and that was still kind of garnering a lot of the moviegoers at that time. And then this movie came out two weeks later and it didn't do too well. Another reason why the movie failed is because of the PG-13 rating. This film is obviously the demographic is for kids. So the main demographic that this movie is obviously catered to, uh, they couldn't go see it. And I think it also had to pertain to marketing. Uh, the billboards for this film, uh, I don't think were the best. It, it just kind of showed obscure images of like Dracula and the other universal monsters with wanted posters and stuff like that. I, I, it just wasn't a well-marketed film, unfortunately. But regardless, it has gained a following over the past decade or so because of the internet, because of people like me who make videos on this kind of stuff and want to talk about this film. So let's talk about this amazing film. Let's talk about the PG-13 rating. Uh, the reason why the movie is PG-13 is because there's some stuff that's dated. Uh, <laughs> a movie like this would probably not be made today. Well, I, actually, I don't know, because obviously It was made, Stephen King's It, and there's a lot of very similar um, comparisons with this movie and that film where it's got a very Amblin Goonies style where you have these kids and they're, they're hanging out in this small town and they talk like how kids would talk. 
behind their parents' backs. There is a lot of cursing in this film. And by cursing, I mean like really dated terms that we just don't use nowadays unless, you know, you're an asshole. Uh, there is a, there is a well, how do I describe it without even saying the word? There's a hard F word in this movie. I'll just play the clip, I'll bleep it. What'd you say, f it? What'd you say? <laughs> Not only do the little middle schoolers curse in this film, the little, I don't know how old she is, the four or five year old sister in this film. Uh, <laughs> she's adorable though. It's okay, you guys. He's friends with us. Come on, don't be chicken shit. <laughs> I don't care about that stuff though. I, I understand that that's just funny. I'm not easily offended. Like I watched this film when I was a kid. I'm like, this is awesome. This is great. It's also amazing too, because over the past few years recently, it seems that Universal has been trying really hard to bring back the Universal Monsters franchises. They've done it multiple times and failed multiple times. Uh, the first recent time was with Dracula Untold. I, I believe they were trying to make a universe out of that. That movie bombed, so that universe failed. Then they tried to do it again with 2017's The Mummy starring Tom Cruise. And that got as far as to the point where they had like pictures of the upcoming characters. Like they, they did like a photo shoot like with the uh, characters who were slated to be, I, I think like Johnny Depp was a character. I forgot who he was. Was it Wolfman or Frankenstein? Johnny Depp was supposed to be part of this universe and like they totally scrapped it because you know, the mummy failed and everything. I'm assuming that they're trying to do it again because The Invisible Man in 2020 was was excellent. I'd love to talk about that film soon. And then there is uh, The Wolfman 2025 coming out. It's from Lee Wanell, who also directed The Invisible Man. So I'm assuming that that's gonna be an attempted shared universe or maybe that's just the same director, I don't know. Regardless, I don't really care if there's like a modern day interpretation of the Universal Monsters universe because we just have this excellent movie. I think this is just enough for me. The film was directed by Fred Decker, who has had a pretty okay career in film. Uh, he's known as a director and writer. He wrote and directed this film. Uh, he did Night of the Creeps. He did RoboCop 3. He did an episode of Tales from the Crypt. So obviously this is a guy that loves like horror or like practical effects and stuff like that. And the film was also written by Shane Black, who has had a very successful career. He directed Iron Man 3. Uh, the Good Guys, the Predator film from 2018. Yeah, let's not talk about that one. And when you watch the film and even the documentary, uh, Wolfman's Got Nards, you can tell that this is just a duo who really loves this genre and has watched a lot of films in the past regarding these characters. When the filmmakers got permission from Universal to use these Universal monsters in their own film, they could do it under one condition. They had to make their designs a little bit different from the designs from Universal because I, I believe it was because they were using um, the said designs at like parks and attractions and stuff like that. So they had to try to differentiate it, which sounds maybe a little bit difficult, but at the same time, it's actually kind of reassuring when you think about it because that means that they can add their own interpretation or style to these characters. You can kind of see that notably with Wolfman. He looks very different from the Universal version. His, his face is kind of like sticking out, widened a little bit. And then there's also the mummy who is very much more deteriorating, like almost like a zombie or like a corpse that you would see at a museum. So yeah, I, I really like these designs for these characters. I think they work very well on the film. The film is also really funny as well, not because the kids are just cursing, but the film is just edited in a way where it, the kids will say something and then it'll cut to a different scene. And it's like, oh, that's really good comedic timing. Uh, there's one part in the film where the, the main boy, um, his mom goes to a garage sale and finds Van Helsing's journal. And then he's like, oh no, it's in German. Abraham Van Helsing, this is great. <laughs> this is German. There's a lot of stuff like that where the movie will just kind of like say something and then cut to the next scene. I know that's a very simplistic thing, but it just works very well within this film. Like, I don't know. I, I love the editing style. How does that dog get up here anyway? The film is funny, but like I said, there's a lot of stuff in this film that would not slide today. Um, specifically, 
There's a lot of fat shaming. Um, there is a kid in the group named Horus. That's his name. But he is called Fat Kid throughout the entire film. And you think at first it's the bullies who call him Fat Kid. Scar man on the street, Derek. Hi, I'm Derek, and I'm in the street where Fat Kid is blocking traffic. Fat Kid, can't you stop eating? But it's not just the bullies. It's uh, every member of the group that calls him Fat Kid. Dracula might be here too. Oh man, Fat Kid farted. Oh, oh, not, so can't you hold it? Disgusting. It's just like, wow, uh, you're not even trying to hide that trope of like, we need like a fat kid in our group. Like you, you just, you just called him fat kid. That's his identity. <laughs> There's also a very, very questionable scene regarding uh, one of the teenage girls in this film who is the older sister of one of the boys in the group who happens to live next door to the treehouse, And the older member of the group is uh, using the telescope to look through the window and stuff. Um, he starts uh, taking pictures of her as she's, you know, getting undressed. And later on in the film, they're told that she is a virgin. And the ritual that they need to do within Van Helsing's journal in order to stop Dracula requires a virgin. So in order to get her on board with this task that they need to do, they pull out the Polaroid pictures they've been taking and basically frame her saying like, hey, you need to come with us or we're going to like show this to everyone at school and it's like oh my god that is that's insane speaking of which there's just a lot of stuff in this film that probably shouldn't be in here or it's just like oh that came out of left field um so there is a creepy old man neighbor that the kids are very scared of and they have this book from van helsing that they need translated because it's in german and then they remember that the creepy old man neighbor is german so they take the journal to this man's house and he's actually like the nicest man you'd ever meet like you know offers them like uh drinks and food and stuff like that and is able to help them out and then the movie uh just flat out says that he's a holocaust survivor <laughs> man you sure know a lot about monsters now that you mention it i suppose i do like bro like, what, what, why is this in the film like, cool on you for going that hard, but like, damn. <laughs> also, uh, just a little side note, when I got that initial DVD from Blockbuster when I was a kid, I think that was kind of like the starting point of me really appreciating physical media. As you guys see, I have a lot of Blu-rays in the background, mainly for this reason. Um, I love special features and stuff like that, and this was kind of like my first takeaway from special features. So. Uh, in this film, um, the main kid has a dad who is like, a cop and that's how we get a lot of the information that these monsters are running around town is because the kid is able to hear this dialogue from the other room because he's a cop he's away from his family a lot and it kind of causes like a lot of fights with the mother like they were supposed to go to uh, couples therapy and he didn't because he's a cop i never realized this when i watched the film initially but like when the the dad runs into the house to check up on everything you see in the background that there are suitcases there next to the mother and it was explained in like, I don't know, the commentary, the special features that the mother was about to leave. Uh, she was about to divorce him and leave the house. Uh, but they cut that out because they thought it might be a little bit too serious for a kid's film. Even though they kept the Holocaust survivor plot in the film, I, <laughs> okay. Sure, yeah, whatever. Uh, divorce is is much serious than that, I guess. But yeah, no, like that stuff really interested me and that's why I started collecting a lot of Blu-rays because I found that just like really cool that you could learn a little bit more about a movie and the behind the scenes and stuff like that. So I think that really started my interest in collecting a lot of movies when I was growing up. The climax of this film is probably the best part when the kids come together and they have to stop these monsters and stuff like that. Um, I don't actually remember what Dracula's like motives were in this film. I know he has to get the journal that the kids have from Van Helsing. That's why the, the kids are brought up in this scenario. Uh, I think he just, I think it's just like world domination or something like that. Yeah, it's a kid's film. That's probably it. The climax takes place downtown where we see the classic Burger King logo. That's cool.
product placement. That makes sense. I gotta say though, uh, the the other monsters really contribute nothing to this film. Uh, I think the only monsters that really do anything are Dracula and Wolfman. All the other monsters kind of just like appear for their moment and they're stopped. Uh, there's a very humorous scene where like the mummy is um, holding on to like the kids from behind a car and then they shoot an arrow at a tree and like he's unwrapped and stuff like that. I thought that was pretty gnarly and cool. Also there's Frankenstein, uh, which he could have definitely been a threat, but he becomes friends with the uh, the kids in the movie. So he, he's now outed as like any type of danger. Um, so there's that. Then the creature from the Black Lagoon comes up out of nowhere. But uh, even though his time in the movie is shortened and when he's killed, it's so rewarding when you have Fat Kid shoot him uh, because he says this badass line. Hey, Fat Kid, good job. My name is Horace. <laughs> I love the 80s. There's a lot of good lines in this film. Uh, Rudy, the older kid in the group, he's ready to go. He's ready to kill these uh, vampire mistresses. And this is what he says. Where you going, Rudy? I'm in the goddamn club, aren't I? <laughs> I love this movie. I love it. Now, this part is the part of the movie that makes me go, there's no way. <laughs> um, okay, so in the film, um, they uh, decide to use the older sister uh, because they believe that she is a virgin uh, to read from Van Helsing's journal to uh, stop Dracula. Like they, she has to read German and stuff like that. And the German guy is there helping her out. Um, when she's done reading, nothing happens. Dracula isn't stopped. And they come to the conclusion that she might not be a virgin. Are you absolutely sure that she is? You're not a virgin, are you? No? No, what do you mean, no? Well, Steve, but he doesn't count! Doesn't count! <laughs> <laughs> and this is what we, this is what they do. They need to find a virgin quick. So the little girl is right there and <laughs> <laughs> they get her to read from the journal. So this makes her a target for Dracula. So Dracula is like, you know, just mowing guys trying to reach this journal and the person who's reading it, it's this little girl. And Dracula just picks up this little girl by the chin and says this to her. Give me the amulet, you bitch. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, this movie, uh, there's a lot. The ending of the film is great. You have Frankenstein coming last minute to save this little girl from Dracula, and it's just awesome. Oh, yes. And then there's this really cool scene, and it doesn't really make sense but I don't care because it's just like, oh, that's cute. That, that's that's awesome. So the main kid in the film is obsessed with monsters and he's just so ecstatic that he got this Van Helsing journal in the first place in, in the beginning of the film. And uh, there's a part where when they finally open this portal to suck back up all the monsters, Van Helsing gets a hold of Dracula from within this portal and he gives the kids a thumbs up and the kid gives a thumbs up back and that's that's cool it's like oh this hero that you've looked up to and like you've read about is giving you a thumbs up that's a really cool thing to experience although i don't know if the thumbs up gesture like i don't know if that existed during the time of like van helsing and stuff but it's like i don't care it's just a cool moment it's a kid's film and everything i love how everyone from the cast just like comes up at the end of the film and they're like we're the monster squad and the credits roll and it's almost like though that's just like the cast or like the actors of the movie like clapping and hugging each other because like the movie's over and stuff i don't know it just feels like almost meta almost um but oh my god guys i i love this film like i said it makes me so upset that this film has not garnered the amount of attention that it deserves like when we think of like well-known films from the 80s we think of the goonies we think of the Lost Boys. I don't know. I just feel like this film needs to be recognized a little bit more. Like, 
not to say that like the film being called a cult film is like not recognition at all that that's great and stuff i'm happy that it has the amount of followers that it does but i don't know uh, it seems like over the past few years trick or treat has kind of become like this classic horror film it's kind of, it evolved into that because of the years that went by and i kind of want the same thing to happen to this film and I'm hoping that this video does that. If you wanna see this film garner more attention, uh, give this video a like. Comment down below if you've seen this film, let me know your favorite scene. Like this video, share it, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna to try to do more Halloween films in the near future. I'm gonna try next year to review multiple films, uh, but for this year in particular, I only had time to do this specific film. We've actually been so busy for the month of October. Uh, we went to Orlando and we actually went to Halloween Horror Night, so that was really fun. We got spooky this year. Um, but yeah, I know I would love to do more videos like this in the near future. And I already talked about horror films as it is, like current ones that are coming out. Horror movies are just so important to me and I, it's my childhood. And the fact that I get to do this on YouTube and talk about films that I watched as a kid, it means the world to me. And I thank you guys so much for watching these videos. So look forward to more videos soon. Thank you guys so much. I'm Corbin Stuckey and happy Halloween.